And we are live. Um, joining me now is a very special guest. She is the head of marketing for Chainlink, the leading decentralized Oracle network, which doesn't really need an introduction. We all know Chainlink. They're smashing it. She is passionate about the intersection of marketing, automation, and the future of work. She has worked with some of the world's top companies and fastest growing startups uh, on growth, blockchain applications, and applied artificial intelligence right up my alley. Please put your virtual hands together for the CMO and head of Chainlink Marketing, Adele Zhao. Welcome, and the stage is yours. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chris, for that warm introduction. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Adeline Zhao from Chainlink. Super excited to be here. We're all talking about DeFi, and DeFi is core to our hearts at Chainlink. So we're excited. Um, I'm here to talk about how oracles are a key to unlocking this value of DeFi. So first of all, smart contracts um, are, are key to our industry. But let's back up. Before that, we are all here because we are excited about blockchains and how they'll revolutionize supply chains, insurance, and today, most notably, finance. However, there is a fundamental challenge for blockchains to fully fulfill this vision. As we know it, blockchains are an isolated database, and it's separate and completely unaware of what's happening in the real world, the world that you and I live in. So given this, the blockchain cannot communicate directly with the off-chain world. And this is what we call the Oracle problem. Blockchains, by their very nature, get their security from a distributed network of independent miners or nodes. And this decentralized nature prevents it from actually accessing information off chain. So what that means is real world information like market data from the New York Stock Exchange or Bloomberg or events data such as from IoT devices, GPS locations, all of that information cannot be fed into the blockchain. Similarly, that information cannot be taken out of the blockchain and put into real world systems such as retail payment mechanisms or bank systems or even uh, enterprise legacy databases and support, uh, systems. So what we're missing is a communication layer between the on-chain and the off-chain world. So because of this missing on-chain and off-chain bridge of blockchains, the majority of historical smart contracts have centered around tokenization. That's because issuing and tracking changes in token ownership is fully contained on the on-chain environment. For example, if you gave me one Bitcoin, which I'd love right now, given the price, um, that whole transaction is tracked on the Bitcoin blockchain. The data around token transfer is all there. It doesn't need to be aware of what is happening off-chain. Yet the true power of smart contracts is when we integrate them with the world that you and I live in today, the legacy systems and the infrastructures. And that's when we connect these smart contracts on the blockchain to the real world that we build what are called truly universally connected smart contracts. And that's where the future and the growth of uh, blockchain smart contracts lies. We're beginning to see that with DeFi. DeFi is the first major industry being transformed by these smart contracts that are aware of financial markets and things outside of the blockchain. I mean, just today, I think DeFi, even this chart is old, it's now DeFi is now over $4 billion. And unlike traditional tokenization, though, why this is important is DeFi needs to connect to off-chain data. So in a DeFi dApp, they need to understand the price of an asset from multiple sources, including both centralized and decentralized um, exchanges. For example, Aave, one of the pro projects that we're working with, is a borrowing and lending platform. And in order to calculate the collateralization of their loan rates, they need to know what is the price of ETH to USD at any given point. And rather than just pulling it from one exchange, you, they need to know it from the entire market because liquidity um, in the DeFi market changes over time. And so this ETH to USD rate is off chain. It's not inherently on chain. It's pulled from all these centralized exchanges and DEXs. So what this means is um, 
smart contracts now have two important components that they need to consider. You have the on-chain part, which is the historical smart contracts and the chains that they lie on, as well as the off-chain part. The off-chain part includes all the different systems of inputs of data, as well as exputs of data. Therefore, what this means is in order for a smart contract end to end, let's say the ones used by Aave and DeFi, they need to think about it as a entire system that includes both inputs and outputs and to provide end to end reliability across the system. And so what we do at Chainlink is to provide a secure and reliable mechanism to bring this external data on chain, as well as to trigger things from the smart contracts off chain. And to do something like this, we require a completely new approach through something called an Oracle. An Oracle is a system that can connect various blockchains to inputs and outputs. And at Chainlink, we're working with some all the top blockchains, including Ethereum, uh, Tezos, Conflux, and countless others, uh, to provide this input to provide their DApps, the inputs and outputs, to be intelligent and connected. So, how do we do this? Um, we do this first by decentralization. Just as the blockchain is decentralized. Your connectivity layer, which we're calling the Oracle layer, needs to similarly be decentralized. We also work with provably secure nodes. In addition to having the top industry node operators, we actually also have in enterprises working on our nodes. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we welcomed Deutsche Telekom, one of the world's largest telecommunication providers, as a node operator for Chainlink. They're lending their decades of years of experience running professional grade infrastructure to help secure and reliably run chain link nodes. High quality data. This is key. As the saying goes, garbage in, garbage out. If you don't have the highest quality data triggering your smart contracts, then your contracts will fail. They'll be moot. Your your, if your price of ETH to USD, as we talked about in Nave, was off, then your collateralization rates will be off. You might your loan might be canceled before um, for a failure to have the right collateralization rates, or even if um, or potentially your loan is still continued, but the, let's say the price of ETH drops, then you're under collateralized. But all that information is not available if that high quality data is not there and being ported into your smart contract. We also work with uh, cryptonomic securities. So we have binding service agreements that generate staking penalties when node operators perform poorly. And therefore, this incentivizes them to do well and to respond rapidly on time with the most accurate results. We also practice something called defense in depth. Uh, we layer on trusted execution environments, zero knowledge proofs, and other secure approaches to ensure that the Oracle system is secure. And then we're really lucky to be supported by a huge community of open source developers, node operators, academic researchers, and security auditors. Many, I think, who are probably in the audience today. And then finally, we are built across all different blockchains. We are native to Ethereum, but we work with the top, and we work with the top Ethereum DeFi applications. Ethereum is where we have the largest variety of data products available today. However, we also make Chainlink oracles available across all chains. We do this because by supporting more chains, we grow the overall demand for off-chain data. And then having additional chains demanding more data equals a greater opportunity for the data providers. And the larger market opportunities attracts more quality data providers to work in our blockchain ecosystem. Then you get large traditional data providers that send data to Bloomberg terminals and NASDAQ systems, all of them want to then work in the blockchain ecosystem. And more high quality data is beneficial to the decentralized applications that consume this data, and it becomes a win-win for everyone. As we talk about oracles, one of the most important things to realize is the oracle is what is bringing data from blockchain data into the blockchain and out of it. However, just as important as a blockchain is 
decentralized, the Oracle system also needs to be decentralized. A centralized block, a centralized Oracle becomes a single point of failure. Your entire smart contract is only as secure as its weakest link. Therefore, if your Oracle is not decentralized, then that becomes the attack vector or the area where your entire smart contract can fail. So again, very important if you're looking at Oracle systems, you have to first make sure that it's decentralized. Other things to consider, so again, decentralized Oracle network, make sure that you have very high quality node operators, uh, make sure that they are civil resistant. And for us, we make sure that the Oracle networks all have at least seven node operators minimum. And many of our typical networks have significantly more, some approaching 30 plus. And these, Another thing when you're deciding on oracles is you need to figure out how much information they share about their nodes. So here on our uh, on Chainlink, we have a very easy to view visualization to see the co historical quality of node operators. This data is visible and open on chain in something that you can go analyze right now. Provable historical performance history is also very important, right? If we're talking about decentralization and about node operator performance, we need to understand how these node operators operate. Uh, we, we had a really great community member that created the website called reputation.link. You can go visit it right now. It has tons of great charts and graphs that allow you to review node performance history. Um, as a developer, you know, this is important for you to understand to make sure your system is secure. I briefly touched about this earlier, that data quality is super, super critical. Garbage in, garbage out. And so you need to make sure that the data that your Oracle feeds you is of the highest quality. Even if you have the most decentralized systems with the best security guarantees, if the data that's fed in is bad or poor, then your contract is not still not going to operate in the right way. And this data is one of the most important critical aspects to get right. When you're thinking about data, you have to make sure that's very high quality. You also have to make sure that your oracles can access credential data. What that means is data behind a paid paywall. If you're just trying to pull free data, um, let's say from free APIs out there, that data is never going to be really good quality. I mean, people want to be paid for their work, right? Data providers need to pay for data and you need to pay them. It's a business. And if you um, and so the best quality data is usually always behind paywalls. And so you need to make sure your Oracle systems can access that information of credentialed premium data. And furthermore, at Chainlink, we don't pull just from a single data provider, a single exchange with free APIs, because that's not really an Oracle. Because again, that one source could also be corrupted. So we provide a lot of customizability to the user. Uh, on the data quality side, you can see the jobs and nodes and all the information about that specific um, piece of data. Another thing to make sure that your Oracle system has is binding commitments. We need to make sure that there is some sort of service level agreements that these nodes operate in the right way and pull the right data because, again, super critical to your DAP. You need that in order to make sure that it is always representing accurate information. And then as the network grows, you get more and more information about the historical performance and the node security. What we do is a system called Web of Trust, where you grow your reputation over time. And similar to how websites in the, you know, in the real world uh, operate, you, you grow trust over time and you can apply that same type of thinking um, framework into thinking about the nodes in the Chainlink or any other Oracle network. And then we are extremely customizable. So when you're evaluating oracles, understand how much customization can you get? We talked about customization on the number of nodes you wanted, the types of nodes, but you can also decentralize at the data source level. So you can be pulling from multiple data providers who then pull from multiple other data sources. And at Chainlink, all of this is customizable to whatever you, the DAP developer wants.
And it is with all these different components that you put together that you can create truly decentralized financial apps using decentralized oracles. As this chart shows, you have all the exchanges centralized and decentralized, the data price feeds coming in from there, going to countless different data providers who are experts at removing fake exchange data, at rebalancing data and chasing where the volume goes, at figuring out what is the right way to calculate the price. And then these data providers put this data into Chainlink nodes, and then this, these Chainlink nodes and put them into a price reference contract that is referred to by DeFi users. Um, some of our most popular, you know, we work with a lot of the, the top DeFi projects, including Synthetics, Aave, Set Protocol, Loopring, who I think uh, just spoke earlier. Um, so you, countless, countless other users in DeFi are all relying on Chainlink. Chainlink enables DeFi dApps to go to market significantly faster uh, because you no longer have to build this entire decentralized Oracle system. We built it all for you and you can plug and play within a matter of like hours or days, I think hours um, into your smart contract so you can get off and running very quickly. If you want to take a look, here are some of the reference feeds. Um, just go to feeds.chain.link uh, to view them. You can see these aggregations live, all the nodes pulling the data up to figure out what the price right now of BTC to USD, for example, is. To summarize, DeFi is the beginning of the redefinition of what a smart contract is. Super, super excited to see this evolution of finance uh, made possible. And we at Chainlink are super honored to be part of that story of connecting these DeFi dApps with the off-chain data that you need. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to find me. I'm uh, on Twitter at, at Alan Joe, and our Chainlink website is at chain.link. Thank you so much. Thanks, Adeline. Okay, so we've got one question, if you're okay with that. Uh, depends on the question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it's from Nino, and he wants to know, what are the top Oracle providers at the moment? I would say, if you ask anybody, I would say that Chainlink is the top Oracle provider. Um, we are the only one with dApps that are live on mainnet, securing over a billion dollars in valuation. There are no other Oracles out there that come anywhere close. When you're valuating Oracles, ask them, are they live on mainnet? How much value are they actually securing? Are they, you know, are they being used by the top DeFi dApps? Um, and I will guarantee you, if we go out and look, there's no one even remotely close to where Chainlink is. Okay, fantastic. I don't know whether this is a private question, um, but I'm going to read it out. You can make a decision on whether you need to speak privately. All right. Um, if we wanted to build a new stable coin pegged against Euro, how fast and for which cost could I use Chainlink products? Absolutely. So we work with a lot of um, different teams to help with the stable coins system. So Ampleforth, for example, uses Chainlink uh, price feeds to calculate uh, the their peg. So I think it'd be very fast. I mean, so it really depends on you know the team, your team, how experienced you are. But we can help you get even like in, for example, at hackathons, you can get a chain link thing running in a matter of like an hour, like 30 minutes and you get something running. So we've helped so many dApps really just, um, just launch much faster. I mean, Ave, you can see some of the quotes they talked about how we help them shorten their development timeline from months to a matter of weeks. And now that they're going you know, to win the top. So I would say integration can be very, very fast. Um, depends on how complicated your system is, but it can be a matter of just a couple of days or um, yeah, usually I think a couple of days, especially if it's a price reference feed that's already live and being used. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, um, I think that's pretty much all the questions now. Um, are you okay to share your slides? Uh, yeah, I think I'm happy to do that. Okay, super. One of the team members will get in contact with you and we'll share it online with everyone. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Um, Thank you we'll all for having me. All right. Bye-bye.